Okay, and now for the second part of our example analysis, we'll go uh, through an external function type example where I'll show you uh, what components we have, what they do, and then I'll show you how this uh, example works uh, in motion. So uh, to begin with, we have two contracts in this uh, source code file the first uh, contract is called oracle and the second one is called oracle user uh, first of all uh, i suppose there are some of us i also didn't know actually when i started learning about it there are some of us who don't know what an oracle is so in a crypto world oracles are entities that connect blockchains to external systems this is important because uh, here with this example, we are going to simulate how an uh, external system, how an external contract communicates with, uh, with an Oracle user. So we have this Oracle, like this entity that connects blockchains to uh, external systems. And uh, then we have this Oracle user, uh, which will, uh, which will uh, consume the service that uh, the Oracle is providing. Okay, so first uh, let's go through uh, the Oracle user. I think this would be more uh, natural. First of all, we have an Oracle const. Uh, this is actually not a variable, it's a constant. And uh, this constant holds an, or, uh, an object of uh, Oracle contract type and uh, this uh, actually let me go from the inside it will be easier so here we have an address of uh, our uh, Oracle contract I still didn't deploy it so I'll change this later so this uh, this address is uh, produced by uh, calling the function address and uh, giving it this uh, this string literal and now when we get our uh, address uh, response or uh, result from this function uh, we will construct an uh, a contract interface to to this upper contract which already does exist so just imagine like a this part is already deployed and it exists. And when we do this, we are actually defining our connection to this uh, Oracle. We also have this variable exchange rate. Uh, this variable will be set by the Oracle uh, at a later point in the story. And uh, we have two functions. The first function is called buy something and this function actually calls a function in the Oracle. So we have these two systems. The first one is Oracle user, uh, which calls this function in the Oracle contract. And then afterwards we have this, uh, just let me check. I don't want to say it wrong. So reply will yeah and uh, the oracle contract via its uh, reply function will actually call a callback function in the oracle user so uh, they are mutually calling themselves this uh, oracle contract and the uh, oracle user contract so by calling this function by something we are actually calling the query function of the oracle contract and we are giving it two arguments the first one is i'm sorry for this pop-up the first argument is a string this string will represent our uh, currency that we are uh, aiming to get the exchange rate for so that's usd and also by saying uh, by stating this keyword this we are referring to our Oracle user contract from the outside. And then we are, by giving this argument, we are uh, 
sending our function signature. So this function signature comprises of both our contract address and uh, the function oracle response, uh, this function signature. Uh, so uh, the main purpose of this part is to set, to, to write or to record in the Oracle contract, uh, a re uh, to put there a record that uh, for uh, a USD currency, we want to have, uh, we want the Oracle contract to call this function in this contract. Okay, so this is like an address of the contract and uh, the address of the function or the function name. Okay, and uh, the next function in the Oracle user contract is function Oracle response. Uh, it will uh, take one argument and that's response. It's a numeric uh, argument. And what it does is it will set Oracle users variable exchange rate to a certain value, to a response value. And uh, we also have this require block, which uh, has only one purpose, and that is to allow only uh, the Oracle to, to execute, to call this function. So even Oracle user cannot execute this function, only the Oracle contract can do so. Okay, and now for the Oracle contract, uh, we have this uh, struct. As we already know, a struct is a custom data type. It's called a request. And uh, it has two members. The first member is a variable called data. And the second uh, member is a function type. This is the sweet spot. Uh, the core of this example. And uh, what it says is it will uh, take a function, function type that uh, takes one unsigned integer as a parameter. And uh, this function is external and it will store it in, uh, in this uh, variable uh, called callback. So whenever uh, actually, I'll uh, explain it uh, in a moment. It will be easier to comprehend. Uh, here we have an array of requests, it's a private array, so it's not uh, accessible from the outside, only the Oracle contract. And as we know for, uh, oh, sorry, only the Oracle contract can access it. I'm sometimes confusing internal and uh, private, but uh, when we have private, it's only for this uh, for this contract. And if we had an internal uh, visibility keyword, then it would mean that also uh, this contract and the uh, contracts that inherit from it would be able to use it. However, here we have only private, and this means that only the Oracle contract can access this array. We also have a definition for a uh, for an event called new request. So each time when uh, this uh, signal gets emitted, uh, it will have uh, it will emit an unsigned, unsigned integer, and this unsigned integer, as we can see right here, will actually represent. Uh, let me see request length. So it will actually represent uh, the length of our array uh, decreased by one. So if we have uh, the requests array uh, of uh, containing 10 items, its length will be 10. So 10 minus one, will be equal to nine. And this will actually be the index of the last element in our array. So by emitting this new request, we will always be informed by our uh, Oracle contract, what is the index of the last element that of the last uh, struct element that was written to this array. 
we also had this uh, public function uh, reply and this function takes uh, request ID as the first argument and the second argument is uh, an unsigned integer response and what it actually does uh, request ID is uh, the index of uh, our array element that we are aiming for so as uh, you will see shortly in the runtime of this example if uh, we put only one uh, entry to our array, this request ID will be uh, zero. And if we put another and we want to uh, show how the example works for the second one, then its ID would be one and so on. And the response will be just any number we put in when we are running the, the example, okay? So uh, let me see what we have next. Uh, aha, so when when we get this request ID, or uh, in other words, the the index of the element that we are uh, uh, taking out of the array. Uh, I'm sorry, not uh, really taking out, uh, that we are referring to in the array. Uh, when we get it out, this will be an element of, uh, of a struct type, of specifically this struct type. And then we will just call its callback. And this callback, as you remember from uh, a few minutes ago, will have uh, will be consisted of uh, of the contract of the source contract address and its function. And in our uh, specific case, this will mean this function. Okay, and uh, the response which we set here will be written to this. Oracle user contract. Okay, so here we go. I'll just have to consult with my uh, with my uh, cheat sheet for uh, the contract test scenario. Of course, I could have done it with any number, but I would like to uh, do it the way I descri described in the article, so you can exactly replicate uh, the same results. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to deploy the Oracle contract. And of course we can do so by selecting it from the drop-down menu. And when we click deploy, we will have our Oracle contract deployed at this address. And now, please pay attention, this is a very important step. We have to copy this address of our contract and paste it right here as uh, as an argument for our Oracle user contract because we, and I'll press save uh, because we know uh, we need our Oracle user contract to aim for this uh, deployment address and uh, it changes with every uh, start of a remix and with every deployment so this is why we have to pay attention to actually take take this address right here. You can just press this copy icon and uh, paste the result here. Okay, and now that we have our uh, Oracle user contract set, I'll press Control plus S for save and uh, actually for compile. And now I'll take this freshly uh, compiled Oracle user contract and I'll deploy it too. Okay, it's right here, and now we have everything. Uh, just for the hygiene of our uh, of this uh, log output, I'll clear the console so we'll be able to easier see what is going on. So first, uh, the contract test scenario says that uh, we should call the buy something function. Uh, the buy something function is here in the Oracle user contract. So when I press this, uh, the buy something function executed successfully. And what happened is that uh, the Oracle contract query function got executed. It uh, received the USD string uh, right 
here in uh, the data uh, parameter and it also received the function callback so we have this oracle response function in oracle user contract and uh, this function callback was passed to this uh, callback parameter and what happened next is uh, these two variables i'm sorry for these pop-ups they annoy me too uh, we are actually forming a struct uh, request element we are initializing it with our two received variables data and callback and now that we have this uh, uh, request element we are pushing it to the array of requests and finally uh, the contract emits the information that a new request is is being uh, processed let me just check where it is okay here we have arguments uh, the arguments for our uh, event uh, it was, as you remember, uh, the index of the last element that got uh, pushed to the requests array. And here it says zero. So we have the zeroth element in our array. Uh, if we deploy, uh, let me see if we deploy another one. We can also do this. We can deploy another Oracle user but I won't, I almost did it, but I won't because uh, the contract test scenario uh, doesn't cover this. It, it's not necessary to show the functionality of this example, but if you want, you can deploy it once again. And just remember when you do this, okay, I'll quickly show it. I cannot hold myself from doing it. <laughs> I'll press deploy. And here we have it once again. And when I click buy something from this other second instance of oracle user contract we will also get uh, this callback stored in the oracle contract in this uh, requests array but under the index of one because we have uh, the index zero for this oracle user contract instance and we have index one for this one okay so let's ignore the second one you can do it for exercise but uh, i'll just follow the test scenario okay now that uh, we pressed we called the buy something function now from the oracle contract we can say uh, we can actually call the callback function via reply as you can see here the reply will work by going into the requests array it will take our index zero that i've put right here that's request id or uh, the array index and for this zeroth element it will call its callback function and this callback function is something that we received via this callback parameter and before that we send this from this uh, in this argument this point oracle response so uh, the zero goes for uh, for the array index array element index and the response is something we can uh, make up so I'll just put to be consistent with the test scenario number 17. Okay, and now when I press reply, the Oracle contract will actually remotely call this callback function. It will know how to find the right one because it stores it, it stored it uh, here in the callback variable of its struct in the array. And when it calls it uh, right here, so it will call this function. And when it calls it, it will pass this response. And this is this number 17. It will pass it as an 
argument to this parameter response and the exchange rate variable of our Oracle user contract will be set. Before I do that, I just want to show you that uh, the exchange rate of the Oracle user contract is currently unset. Well, actually it's set to the default value. That's the way EVM works. And when I press exchange, we can see that the value is zero. But when we call the reply function from the Oracle contract, as we just did, and now when we go back to the Oracle user contract and press this button uh, for uh, getting the value of the exchange rate variable, we can see that the value 17, the unsigned integer 17 is written to the exchange rate variable. So once again, uh, I'll do my best to go through the story in short as a summary. Uh, the Oracle user, ah, the Oracle user contract called the buy something function and actually registered his Oracle response function in the uh, requests array of the Oracle contract. So the Oracle contract uh, became conscious of the Oracle user contract and its callback. It's uh, very similar to when you meet someone. Uh, new and uh, uh, you make uh, your acquaintance with this person and you give this person your business card and this business card states your name address and your uh, phone number and you we can imagine this phone number to be a callback so uh, the oracle contract got the information for the zeroth uh, entry in the requests array and uh, this, for this entry, it should call this function. And now when uh, the Oracle contract actually calls this reply function for the zeroth index with a response uh, deliberately set, it can be any number, uh, this Oracle, uh, so the Oracle contract will actually remotely call the Oracle user contracts function oracle response and it will set the oracle user contracts variable exchange rate to the response value so it goes like a crisscross i believe it's is the expression so my dear thinksters uh, this will be all for uh, this article i hope you enjoyed this uh, example analysis and uh, as always, thank you for your time, attention, and focus. Thank you for your support. And uh, until the next time, take care. Bye.